Hello and welcome to another edition of Call of the Week. I am Bravnar89. This is Shaka. Hello there. And we are going to be taking a look at the ABR Holiday Invitational League. This is just a fun, unique format Blinking Line put together for us, and we've been having tons of fun with. This is going to be the final matchup between Flaming Hobo and Julie July. Brief little overview of the format. Basically, everybody got a sealed deck assigned to them. Uh, one from each of the four sets. In each round of Swiss, you had to choose a different of your four sealed decks to play. The interesting addition to sealed that we made here is that chains were su- assigned to the deck with superior SAS based on the SAS differential. So in this matchup, as you can see, Epilin Bay Artisan, that's going to be Flaming Hobo's deck, has 65 SAS, and Echelenza Fionda Queen, that's going to be Julie July's deck, has a 72 SAS, and so that's going to come to, uh, was it three chains? Yeah, five to nine SAS is three chains. Okay, so Julie is going to be entering the game with three chains on her deck, and uh, Flaming Hobo will be unchained. And so you got to select which deck you took into each round, and then after the four rounds of Swiss, or no, three rounds of Swiss, we went into elimination. And so this is the final game. Does that about cover the format? Or did I miss anything there? Yep, sealed one deck from every set. Um, so we've got a Call of the Archons deck for Julie July and a Worlds Collide deck for Flaming Hobo. Definitely looking to me like julie july is gonna have the upper hand going into this game here that coded deck she's got is looking mighty fine three mind barbs stands out first thing i I caught my eye double shuler and a with a rise gonna get a lot of value out of that and you know dust imp also gives you a lot of value and toxin just a target on the board that has to be addressed, has to be taken care of, especially with those three mind barbs in play as well. Sanctum looks like a pretty standard Coda Sanctum with some big beefy guys. Some Amber Elimination with Doorstep to Heaven and a Board Clear in Spirit's Way. Untamed, pretty typical bursty Untamed with a Key Charge in there. Uh, With the double nature's call and regrowth, I would have preferred to have seen a Choda, but still a a really nice, bursty-looking Untamed over there. Uh, Double save the pack. Not going to do too much, I think, given that there's no mass damage cards that I'm seeing here. Anything you'd like to add about the Queen deck here? Yeah, what jumped out to me most was that this deck has 22 actions. That's a lot. Mm. Uh, I don't have many decks with that many actions, and so to get this in sealed is certainly unusual. Uh, it's also have 19 pips. Four of those come from the Fertility Chant. So this deck, I think, can just burst up really fast. Mm. The flip side of that is it may not be able to contest the board very well. The Spirit's Way is huge. Nature's Call's really big, especially against Saurian. So hopefully she would hold some of those um, just by seeing the Saurian house and I think that could really clinch the game if it's well timed and the creatures aren't warded or anything like that so I think the the queen deck looks stronger I do see circumstances where it could draw badly and get a bunch of the board control early Mm, which would be a problem and I guess would just have to hold yeah a lot of good things in uh in the queen deck if it if it draws well if it's a board game i'm not as uh bullish on it yeah it could be problematic if hobo is able to establish the board and julie doesn't think to hold on to her board control or it just comes out at the wrong time yeah and because it's sealed i mean who knows what you should hold or not hold so i think what they think the other person might have is going to matter a lot that's a very good point yeah 
Yeah. And like you said, with no logos to archive, then it makes it a lot harder to blind hold your spirits away for three or four turns. Correct. Yeah. Do you want to take us away with uh, taking a look at Hobo's deck over here? Yeah, sure. We have Sorry and Star Alliance and Untamed. And <clears throat> I think after a few cards are played, it'll be clear this is a World Collide deck. Saurian is the strong point in this mm -hmm. deck. Uh, we have the Imperial Forge Key Cheat, which could uh, come out with a stinky victory. Uh, the Jardis can reap, get you four and two amber. So that's already six. Mm -hmm. And then the Imperial Forge is uh, plus eight minus one per amber and has a pip on it. So you can do some arithmetic there, but those Jardis can actually get you pretty close. And if you have the Raptor as well, you might be able to do it all in one turn. And the Tribute, too. Yeah. Star Alliance, I don't really know what's going on here. The Transporter platform is pretty interesting because you have the three upgrades with pips. So you could get some serious uh, Amber generation with that. Um, things really have to line up well for that to happen consistently. Interestingly, though, that is not answered by Nature's Call. So, and... Uh, both decks have no artifact control at all. Yeah. So if he can get the transporter platform out early, maybe he could be getting uh, three amber per turn uh, with a Garcia, let's say, right. uh, slowing her down. Uh, the other cards, you know, they're, they're kind of there. I think I might play the Explore Rovers as creatures um, just to generate more amber if you happen to repeat Star Alliance able to reap. I think the red alert is going to be almost it's totally dead in this game. Mm -hmm. And then moving over to Untamed, I think there's an alternate game plan where you have an Untamed board and you go with the Song of the Wild. You probably don't want to hold that one either. Especially not with two of them. Yeah, with two of them, like, it might turn up at the right time. You can get some Amber. Yeah. Um, double Song of the Wild with the Ghost Hawk is pretty cool if you can get that into the Jarda. Yeah, that's true. So staring at this list more, like, yeah, when you look at the individual cards, they don't look that good. When you start to look between the houses, and this was the fun thing about Worlds Collide, like you do see some hot plays that you can do. Wild Spirit in there too, with the Ghost Talk and Song of the Wild. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could, you can get a stop in Untamed, and also the Mustic Mermook. Yep. Yeah. So it could raise the key cost, slow the game down. Right. Which actually, it would be to um, Flaming Hobo's benefit to leave the Mermook out, all the pips in Julie July's deck. The Deepwood Druid, it it just doesn't do anything. I don't really think you want to fight. Right. So they're just three power bodies, more or less. But maybe they'll be ignored and therefore can reap. Yeah, I mean, if if Hobo has enough bodies on the field that Julie can't deal with, then that, I think that's Hobo's kind of win condition is reaping a lot. Yeah, he has to hope he draws a lot of cards in one house like early before she can respond. Her deck is, is missing a bunch of Amber Control, too. So if he can lay out a board and Spirit's Way is near the bottom, it's going to be big problems. And the Mimicry got some good target. Yeah. Control the Weak could actually close out the game mm. if he copies it after a big untamed turn. Key Charge. Key Charge could work. Key Charge could also do it. Yep, that's a good one. If you get off the Song of the Wild, maybe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Doorstep, in case things are getting uh, totally out of control. Arise. Not really, not as much. Yeah, what would you get? Get back all those deep wood druids. <laughs> <laughs> He's definitely got a lot of choices. Uh, but we have the negative 0.5 efficiency. How these decks, like we're talking about what could happen, like a lot of times you get hand like uh, two deep wood druid, two explore rover, imperial forge, and like axiom of grisk or something. And Ugh, you gross. have two, two, two <laughs> for one or two turns and uh, nothing really happens at all. So I think if we see that kind of configuration, he's completely toast. Yeah. One one uh, final thought I have is uh, there's definitely potential for the Garcia transporter platform combo to mess with Julie's key cheating plan. Uh, so something to think about. You know, Hobo doesn't know that she's got a key cheat, but it could be pretty impactful if you can make keys cost plus four. That's going to really diminish julie's chances of being able to key cheat right and if he can make her forge for 10 uh, he deleted four yeah. pips yeah out of the deck more or less perfect yeah 
All right, any final thoughts? I think they are about ready to play. Yeah, let's watch. I'm excited to see this matchup. All right, let's hop in the game. All right, three chains. Who's going first? Okay. Flaming Hobo's going first, so she's not going to get that edge from the chains. Okay, so she she will be slightly more impacted by the three chains she's added. Julie spawning up here on the top with uh, ooh, that Spirit's Way in the opener. That is not what she wants to see. Yeah, that's oh, and go. Hobo with the with the the transporter platform. He mulliganed his hand as well. There was a bunch of untamed. Okay, so he's going with the transporter platform, hoping to get value. Julie mulliganed into a. Mm, it's better than what it was, but still not great. Definitely better. Mm -hmm. uh, holding on to the nature's call. You know that's clever. She knows there's not a lot of uh, control in here. And look at that. She's going to be able to, if she plays her cards right, uh, Nature's Call and get rid of that cloaking dongle quite easily here. Yeah, but is it t is it too soon for that? It, she might want to hold off a turn. Stun with the, uh, the Maxima. Yeah. Because she could just fight Chan away now. Well, not with a dongle. Oh yeah, elusive. That's right. Yeah, so some less than less than ideal turns here, but um, moving along, that's sealed for you. This is looking pretty good for Hobo. This is definitely yeah. the start he needed. Now, does he go into Sarian here? I mean, he could Imperium his Chan, which would protect it from Nature's Call, but then he can't use the platform anymore discards the ducks interesting i guess he doesn't want it, want it to get bounced yeah i could have warded it but maybe it's, it's just not going to be doing anything interesting yeah probably not worth it for him double wards the ludos so those ludos are going to be sticking around for a little mm -hmm. while all right he's got five amber so which deck yeah. had 19 pips again yeah right the deck <laughs> The, the deck with zero amber right now. <laughs> All right. What can Julie do here? I think this is the only thing that doesn't look unproductive. But it's not great. Yeah. Either. Just got to get these chains off. I mean, you could get like three amber with Sanctum, but... Yeah. He's already stunned, though. Right. This is a tough call. Yeah, this is this is a rough situation she's in. Untamed is pretty not great. I mean, do you hold the key charge? I think at this point you can't you can't hold key charge. No. It's yeah. way too early. She has yeah, she has no amber. I mean untamed might make sense. Stun a Ludo, get rid of those wards, pop Chan back into the hand, getting rid of the dongle. So she's going for Sanctum Reaping. Just reaping, uh, fighting, fighting one Ludo, getting rid of that ward, and then gaining two off the cleansing wave. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's not great, but she was not in a, a ideal position there. Lots of not great choices for yeah, her. Yeah, that was probably as much as you could do in Sanctum. Yeah, not much reason to not to fight. Okay, he is he is going for the, uh, the board clear there. Holding on? No. Okay, he's playing it for an Amber. He played the Imperial Forge for Amber. I thought he was holding. Yeah, it. he's not going to get enough Amber to really utilize that. Yeah, I was going to be very surprised if he did that. But okay, he's got some plan <laughs> I'm not aware of. Wisely playing that for an Amber. I mean, looking like he's in a strong position here. Well, we'll see. Uh, Julie popping everything back into the hand. He's, he's taking an early lead. I'll put it that way. Yeah, he, he may be running out of gas. Right. Like, this Saurian turn is going to be sad. Oh, yeah, he did go to Saurian. And Julie is up to five, now four, with the uh, the one captured there. So she's not horrendously far behind. Yeah. So here, here goes Theros and Turian purged, and then kill the other two so she gets mm -hmm. the Amber back. Now, do you put Duma down so you can draw? Uh, I would do it. Yeah, I think I would, too, just given how how inefficient her hands have been so far. 
but she will not. That is not what she's going to do. Okay, I can do that too. And it would have been, it turned out well because you draw this anyway. Yeah. Julie, hoping he gets one more Amber here. Not going to happen. Not going to be able to play that Schuler for value. Hmm. I think she puts it down anyways, though. All right, now she's the one with the board. Yeah. And this control the weak is going to be... Uh, If she goes dinos, that's devastating. Yep, she did. That's that's rough. Oh, she held Schuler. She did hold the Schuler. Okay, interesting. She she wants to get that amber control. She does not have a ton of amber control, so that that makes some sense. Mm -hmm. And a, a devastating control of the week. Just uh, like, I mean, you literally can't ask for more <laughs> out of control of the week there. <laughs> so a free turn. Now she's considering, I guess, trying to choose between dis or untamed. I think you go untamed. Yeah, if Schuler were there, he could have killed the Deepwood Druid. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, untamed. Dump, dump some. Does she keep yeah. the key charge? Or can you regrowth? I ho I think she gets rid of it. Oh, she never discarded it before. No. I don't think she took yeah, a untamed turn since then. She had it with the with the um, nature's call. Oh, okay. You're right. Yeah. yeah. So this is this key charge is so many chains. Eesh. Yeah, a sunken sunken cost fallacy there. <laughs> I don't think I don't think that was worth it. But maybe uh, maybe she's hoping for that fertility chant to show up soon. Yeah. So last time she called untamed was on turn four. So for three turns the key charge was sitting there. So it's three chains. Yeah. Yeah. That's rough. But that is one of the game closing cards. Yeah. So maybe maybe uh it'll turn out to be the right call. Right. We'll, we'll have to see. Like in sealed, because your cards aren't individual cards are not as good in general, getting that combo, fertility chant and key charge at the end can mean the difference between winning and losing. That's true. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So this board got a lot bigger yeah hobo with a a large star alliance board and uh julie with not much in the way of board control she does have a large board of, of her own but it's spread across all three houses yeah so duma can i don't know explore over yeah she played shield of justice first so yeah. she doesn't want Duma to get hurt, I guess. Ready night. Where does she put the pro uh, protect the weak? Oh, onto uh, protectors. Okay. No, that's not bad. Have an open flank there too. Something else comes along. Yeah. So she attacked a lieutenant. I think that's good because the raiding knight more. See, the annoying thing is the ruling about protectrix. Like you have to actually heal damage for it to be immune. Oh. So I don't see a way these creatures can be damaged to kill the lieutenant. Yeah. Mm. But the good news is Flaming Hobo cannot transport a platform to Garcia anymore because it loses the lieutenant's protection. That's true. Yeah. Well, he could toss the tactical officer into someone Just so he can fight put it, it into something. Yeah. That. I wonder if that's what he does here because that might make sense. He's probably going to transport a platform and then red alert which would actually make the Protectrix viable for healing and then fighting uh, with the Raiding Knight there. Oh, that's a good point. Hmm, he says. Yep. This is this is a tricky move. Oh, he meant to use it, not stun it. Oh, did he accidentally stun Yeah, his oh, he accidentally <laughs> stunned his creature. Yeah, that, yeah. that happens. Oh, yeah, just a, a uh, ordering misclick there. Hobo's going to have a pretty big turn here, though. He's going to be able to reap with the druid and actually get value out of it, both capturing and healing the Krakar. This is going to be some fun Yeah, I was there. trashing. There's not going to be any healing, but <laughs> it actually matters. <laughs> and he's going to capture. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe we need the Spirit's Way. That might have been the card to hold. 
Yeah, I mean, at the time she played it, it made a lot of sense. And especially in Sealed, you don't know what's coming yeah, next. Yeah, I got two so. Widows out. Which yeah, that, is, you know, th- that's pretty intimidating. Yeah. So now does does he crash the moon and then play Red Alert? No, he just went for Red Alert. Yeah, so I don't know if he's going to do the crash the moon line. Okay, he did do it. Yep. Nope, there he did. He did. Yep, take out the Protectrix. Yeah. This Lieutenant is nasty. We didn't really talk about it. Yeah, I mean, uh, oh man, wow, Hobo, uh, Hobo, looking like he's in a pretty strong position here, and uh, gonna be able to make keys cost ten for Julie for a while. Yeah, we did not talk about the uh, uh, universal translator being a thing either. Mm. Yeah, take advantage of his uh, his yeah. creature advantage there. Okay, well, Schuler can get something done. Hobo has a Shuler can definitely be viable. Okay, that was now. a great so there hit. You go. Oh, nice. Hit on the tribute. That was really good. Because now he's gonna be forced to go Star Alliance if he wants to. Yeah. And if he didn't, he actually would have been in a lot of trouble. Uh because if she forges the second key, she's threatening to win off the key charge. Yeah. But he's about to be in check for three keys. I think Julie's going to be forced to go Sanctum and yeah. use that doorstep. And then he'll repeat this play and win the game, I think. Yeah, I think I think that might be what we're looking at here. Because she just doesn't have any answers. Yeah, there's the other nature's call yeah, that uh, doesn't work. Yeah. The spirit sway was the only thing. It would just it would just go into the hand, and then she could he could still make keys cost eight. Yeah. So. I do this against worlds collide often, and it, I don't know how many times I have to learn this lesson, but you you need your board clear. Mm, Oops. Yeah. I, there's so many games I it's like I play it because the situation is looking bad, and then they just drop like a lieutenant or a triserian legionary you can't do anything about it. Right, and it's warded and has elusive from cloaking dongle. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This this happened to me like last night. Like I just, if I were playing Julie's deck, like I probably would have done the exact same thing. Yeah, I think I think many of us would, especially in sealed mm-hmm. where you don't know what's coming. But that's that's looking like a closer here. Uh, I don't know what Julie's going to be able to do. She's going death, so she could steal. Two. Yeah, if she kills the Schuler. So the Schuler can finally kill Lieutenant. So that was good. Yeah. Too little, too late, though. Yeah, these taunts. Just nuts. And I think Flaming Hobo got... Um, he thankfully did not see much Untamed at the wrong time. Right. Yes. I wonder what's in his draw because I feel like there's still a bunch of untamed that hasn't has yeah. Come out. I'm looking at his discard. There's one untamed card in it, and there's three in the hand and two on the board. Yeah, so, so he drew super good. That's like six. Uh, yeah, that's like six <laughs> out of seven cards in the draw. Yeah. That's pretty good. <laughs> and the early transporter platform was just like that was awesome. Like we said before the game, if he can get the transporter platform out early, that's going to help him a lot. And it really did. He didn't even get all three, but those two upgrades that he kept playing again and again just helped him burst beyond numbers that Julie was able to control. Right. And I wonder if that Schuler uh, got played earlier, maybe he could have handled the lieutenant. Yeah, if the Schuler got played earlier and, you know, looking at it now, I, I understand why she held the key charge, but I think... Uh, in retrospect, it might have been the better choice to to just chuck it because it was so early, and she was already starting with chains, and like she had to she had to keep up, and uh, at a certain point, she had to get back to her board clear. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, they're definitely different uh, philosophies of Keyforge too. Like, you know, bouncing Death Quark would say absolutely throw the key charge away, but I think there's some other players like. 
uh, Dave Cordero hold cards a lot more, and you know, they have a lot of uh, competitive success. So it didn't work out in this case, but if she were able to forge the second key, then this could have been the, the closer. Yeah, all viable strategies. Yeah, especially in sealed, you just, who knows? Who knows what's going to be the right Yeah, well, we've been talking about the, the key charge and stuff a lot. Um, Flaming Hobo executed his strategy really well. Yeah. And yeah. I think he was aided by the fact he didn't see any untamed early, but he was playing pretty cleanly and he knew how to win the game, just burst a lot and mm -hmm. protect his Amber Control, which was the Garcia. And he warded the Ludos and they kind of made them look threatening, but they actually weren't really that important. No, they didn't end up being very important. Star Alliance was the key there. And yeah, this this board, he, despite the amber totals we're looking at here, like this game was getting into a recoverable state. I think um, mm -hmm. the queen deck just not enough stops. Yeah, which of the wilds and Mermook, you know, showed up late. That could have been big, having that efficiency. Yeah, and if Julie had been able to fight into the Kirkar, she'd had a little bit more board. Like, Flaming Hobo did a very good job just kind of wiping out the board when she had a board. And then she didn't have anything to fight into Kirkar and then take care of it. And if she'd, like, just one or two turns uh, sooner been able to take out Kirkar and then Garcia, we could have seen a very different situation here. Like, she, you know, she's at seven now. And she's got the key charge, and it, it it could have been, you know, Hobo was getting a bunch of Amber by just replaying those upgrades. Yeah, so. and Transporter Fly from turn one, you definitely want to see that. Yeah, Lieutenant, I think, was the MVP mm -hmm. in this game that totally shut um, any response down. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Well, that was a great game. It's quite entertaining. Yeah, that was a good game. Always love Sealed, a different level of Keyforge. And uh, overall, this has been a really fun event. And congratulations to Hobo for taking away the win. And congratulations to Julie for second place. That's definitely nothing to uh, nothing to be ashamed of. Yeah, they did a great job. And they've both been pretty involved with ABR stuff. So it was, it was nice to have them participate in our tournament. I'm really glad they did. And... I think we all had a great time. Definitely. And, uh, you know, Hobo pulls a lot of weight putting together the ABR tournament that is run out of the ABR Discord. So if you are not in that, be sure to sign up for the next season. It's going to be starting in, what, probably a month from now or so? Yeah, I'm not exactly sure when, but uh, stay tuned for announcements on that. Yeah, definitely check that out. This latest one has been... Uh, really big i think there's eight teams and some of the biggest names in keyforge are playing in that tournament and it's just a, a really fun tournament to play in so be sure to check that out yeah absolutely it's a ton of fun this is season three it's team based so you get to meet a lot of other people who love playing keyforge get to try a bunch of different formats it's a really great time yeah the wild and unique style of formats really gives it just kind of a a fun, playful feeling. So it's not, you know, people are competitive and want to win, but it's not like super hardcore competitive. It's just, it's really just about having fun. So yep. thanks again to the competitors, Flaming Hobo and Julie July. It was lots of fun to watch this game and record it. I've been Brobnar89. This is Shaka. And we will see you next time on Call of the Week.